What's up with it, everybody? We're here on episode 14, Low Riding with Lloyd. We're doing something a little different today with my boy, D-Money. We're What's out here happening? in front of my house, sitting in the new 6.5 SS rag. You guys go to my uh, YouTube, like, subscribe, and follow it. It's Low Riding with Lloyd, and uh, here we go. So episode 14, how is everybody? What's up with it, my homie? It's good with you. Shit. Doing a little something different. Got you back out here. So uh, what projects you working on, man? We talked about that stuff and touched on it last time. Uh, Go ahead and tell everybody what projects you're working on. So I'm working on a lot of shit. Like, um, so basically I just released the These Days situation. Last time I was here, you know, it was my birthday. Mm -hmm. I actually released the single that day that's going to be one of the major hits off this EP. Okay. And um, now what I'm doing is, is um, the compilation is already all put together and whatnot. So I'm working on one more. It's a, like a 70s song to go with my 70s vibe. I'm going to try to incorporate with my whole situation. You trying to throw some Shaft shit out there? Type shit? Uh, it's you know funny I mean? you say that because motherfuckers are like, you doing Undercover Brother, you doing nah, Shaft, nah, you doing that's this, tight, you doing though. I, Hey, man, yeah, but, the beats back then were underrated. Right. Everybody's using the same goddamn thing. I don't know if you notice this these days. Everybody sounds the motherfucking same, and if one dude blows up, ten dudes just like him come out. I'm like, yeah, auto-tune was the death of the rap game to me, man. I, 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 I can't, I, I love uh, uh, Jeezy. I, I don't like auto tune either. I mean, I'm not, I'm not dissing nobody that uses it. You know, you, you know, you like it, I love it. What you eat don't make me shit. Type it's shit. Akon sound. But to me, if Akon, anybody owns it, I feel like it's his. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, that too. I get it. Tried to but, buy, I, it just everybody ruined it for me. At, at first, when I heard him and it was like coming off, I was like, okay, it's a little something different. And then everybody just blew it up and, and just auto tuned everything, and it just, man, I was like, fuck. But if anyone owns it, I would say Akon would be the motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Up. Like he always, he's very prominent on the track. He always owns shit. Like I mean, I'm, I'm sad that he's not doing as much work. That's how I haven't heard it. But I mean, like before, yeah, he he had his little nice little run. But to touch back on what I was about to say about um, people, you know, adopting other people's sounds. I mean, it's okay to get influenced a little bit, you know, and get inspired. That's Absolutely. fine. Absolutely. But I have, so there's one dude that I, I'm not going to say no names, nothing like that, but this motherfucker has his own sound already, which is one of the hardest things as an artist to develop yourself is to get your own sound, get that niche. And he goes hard as fuck, yeah. just in general. Like, like, the motherfucker goes hard as fuck. And I heard he just dropped a new project, and he kind of sounds like the baby on it. With the baby is a popping name, you know what I mean? Like, it is, but he had his own. He had his own sound in his own way. Uh, some may disagree, but I feel like he had his own sound. I this motherfucker like hit the nail on the fucking head sounding like this motherfucker. The bars was on point too, because the nigga I'm talking about is very lyrical. Yeah. So the bars is on point and whatnot, but he sounded <coughs> just like him. So I'm like, maybe it's a marketing thing, you know, just because it'll, the fans that you don't have that, you know, it's kind of like cross promotion. You'll get the baby's fans. Yeah. Basically, like, oh, this is the baby. And then they, oh, it's actually this nigga. Let me go find his other shit. Right, right. You know what I mean? No, for so sure. I mean, I get it. It's cool. But I'm at a point in life to where it's like, yeah, you got to really like, kind of like Drake said, you know, Pac never tried to rock, rap like Mike and, you know, Mike so never tried to sing like Pac. Be yourself, man. Just be, yeah, just be your yourself. fucking self, man. It's so it's underrated it to these it. days. If you just stick to your own shit, you have your own sound, man. It, 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 it's underrated, but it's, it, I don't understand why. You know what I mean? I love something fucking new. And if somebody has the goddamn name, The Baby or some other motherfucking shit, pick another name. They try to twist your motherfucking name you came exactly. up with. Exactly. The baby, duh baby, you know what I mean? I'm like, come so, on, baby. For instance, I'm like, bro. It's funny you tapping the names, because this is like, so for me, what I did was is I, um, my name, when I decided I wanted to rap, I was like really putting a lot into my name. And as a, like, let's say someone's a big executive manager or some shit for a label, they're like, yes. You can tell the people that didn't really care and the ones that really put something into it. Yeah. So like, I was like, going through the motions, I had a few things in mind as far as what was going to be my name when I actually start making music, like that I was going to put out. But the thing is, is it, like when I became a rapper, I was in school still, and I, I was that nigga that had money. Like I just looked like I had money, you know. I yeah. didn't, I, I didn't fucking um, have necessarily like bills like that, rent, whatever else. So I'm just all my bread is going to my. car. I had a car when I was 16, dope ass lack, same shit. Yeah. So my money's going to the cars, and you know, it was a little jewelry and my clothes and whatnot. So motherfucker just started calling me D Money by themselves. Once you get a nickname, it sticks. Yeah. So it's like, so I used that at first, but it's like it's so many fucking D Money, G Money, Y Money, Z Money. So what I did Is was Z money. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, All I know, yeah. probably so somewhere. I, I remember the only money I knew of before it was JT money. Remember that dude? He like came out with uh, that. I, he was just like on one song that I know of. It was I don't even remember who. I think Jay Z was on the song too. Huh? The name sounds a little bit. It sounds vaguely familiar. That's the only one I've ever heard of. 
Yeah, I mean, as far as a Miami made it big, because I mean, usually, like, people, yeah, it's a nickname usually. Yeah, you get You know what I mean? Like, it, that, that's what it is. It's usually a nickname. So, with me, it's like I'm taking it from the nickname to making it, I'm trying to own that motherfucker. Yeah, you know. So, the way that I changed it was, what I did was, is, um, I added the Johnson to the end. I took my real name and added it with it. Right. You know what I mean? So, now it's, it's not D-Money, it's D-Money Johnson. So, if you look for D-Money Johnson, that's all you're going to see. You ain't going to yeah. see nothing else. If you Google what, that shit, that's it, period. That's what my Pandora station says, I think, D-Money Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you, appreciate you. Yeah, but nah, it's, so what that right there did was made me own it. Like I own it and it's, it's mine. I and mean, that's what it is. Even my, like, that's why all my social media media handles is one and only the money. Like that's yeah. just what it is, period. Other niggas is doing it. Okay, it's cool, you know, nickname and how, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then I own it though. Right. That's what it is. That's who I am. And it's, the other thing I don't like about it is the fact that, you know, people will try to make it to where it's like, um, Oh, all he cares about is money, probably, and this, isn't and that. And that kind of sucks because, you know, when I was younger, of course, you know, you're going to think money is kind of everything, which um, it almost, you can justify it money almost gets as you it what is. You yeah, need, exactly. Though. You're going to get you what you need if you're responsible exactly. with it and don't overindulge in the wrong things. I'd rather have rich people problems over poor people problems. Any exactly. Day of the week, you but know see, the I mean? thing is, I don't just value money over everything. Like, I mean, like, money's going to be there. The moment I stop giving a fuck about money is the moment that everything was falling into place and the money keep coming back. Like, if I got $20 in my pocket and I give him a nigga my ass $20, I ain't going to trip about it. Because yeah. for some reason, it comes back times 10. I, I'm not explaining it. I don't know if it's energy Life's or what all it is. about memories because money you can't take it. You ever seen a U-Haul behind a hearse? You ain't taking shit with you. And even when somebody dies, I learned this with my mom, um, they just send the clothes back that they had on them because they, or my mom got cremated. You take nothing with you. No jewelry, no nothing. The nothing gone, whatsoever, period. Money doesn't mean shit. And I do get trapped up in that because I've had poor people problems all my life. You know what I mean? And then I've had... Likewise. likewise I, want, ditto. I want rich people problems because poor people problems is I ain't got nothing to eat. I want to eat something. Rich people problem is I can't decide where I want to go eat. You know what I mean? So... I want rich people problems and touching on the nickname. Exactly, like when it's better to be able to decide which car do I want to drive today. You yeah, know what I'm absolutely. Saying? And on the nickname thing, Long Beach Lloyd, I wasn't born in Long Beach. I, I, when I moved here, I put Long Beach Dash, that's like where I live, and then Dash, my name's Lloyd. So I live in Long Beach. It became Long Beach Lloyd. Now, I'm stuck with that nickname forever. But I'm, it is I'm, what it is, and yeah. you own that shit too. You live it. I, I, mean, I it do is. own it. I mean, I. We were talking I'm before. Gonna, the motherfucker got the nerve to say the nigga ain't from Long Beach, and they, 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 they tripping. They, they living on another planet. You know what Man, I mean? I put on and for this motherfucker. You're like where you be at. My kids are born and raised here. Both my kids were born right up the street in St. Mary's. I mean, and I'm, even I'm that, that's very significant. You know what I mean? I've lived in this house longer than I lived anywhere in my entire life. I haven't ever stayed anywhere. My family constantly moved. This is my home. This is my home for now. It may not be my home forever, but I I'm think it's gonna be your home for fucking, a while. I'm stuck with the nickname, that's for sure, because I, you can't just change your nickname. It is what it is. So I'm gonna rep this city to the day I die. It's where my children. But that's were, that's where the loyalty comes family. into play. You know what I'm saying? Like I, so I done been in <clears throat> major wise three places. You know I done been in Cali, SoCal, period. That's where I was born at. We're not, and then you know, Louisiana. I also have roots there. You know what I mean? I like, love my Louisiana. mama's from Louisiana. I love Louisiana. Everything else. But, uh, you know, I went to high school out there and whatnot. Yeah, we really in the city, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so I'm... uh flavor. I'm in, uh, which, which I'm going to call it, I'm in Louisiana. You know, I, I put my stamp out there. And I, was I wish in, we could just fly to Louisiana right now. We, need, we yeah. need to get on this money so we can have a you private own, jet. Yeah, yeah, you own. Et tu fait yeah. for dinner. Yeah. What's up? Let's go get it. And what is, I think the flight to uh, Louisiana from here is like two and a half, three hours. Uh, it's about three and a half. You get a is straight it? flight, depending on where you're going. Uh, well, Houston, usually I fly into Houston, to be honest. I do. I got so much people there, yeah, so then like I end up just hours. taking a little dip, another three-hour ride. But if you're in the car you want to be in, you know, it's, it's cool to be dipping. Yeah, you know what no, you got to do. Sure. Hit the long bridge. Yeah, I ain't tripping. What's that 16-mile bridge? The long between? bridge that's to go to Baton Rouge? Yeah. yeah for that, that's from Lafayette to Baton Yeah, you're yeah. going through Baton Rouge, whatever else, and yeah. That's right that that, that there, Chafalaya Basin. In, that's what yeah, it's called. You run into uh, Lake Charles and all that right there first. Oh, I think you're talking about a different bridge. Okay, so when you come there's from one Houston, like 16 miles. There's the one DPS when you're leaving. On. Yeah, the one you're talking about when you're leaving from a uh, nigga know about the DPS. Huh? For yeah, anyone that don't know, the DPS is like C C H P. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's exactly the different same. Different strokes for yeah, different yeah, lumps. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> so what happens is, you uh, you hit that bridge you're talking about. It's a nice, pretty bridge. You know, shit's dope, whatever else. And then you get to once you get to Lafayette, you know what I'm talking about? Like, uh, that's where I'm from, Lafayette, yeah. Louisiana, the flats. You know, you already know you're already slow. You keep on dipping, 
And then when you making that transition from there to Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge is like it's another major city. It's like where uh, NBA Young Boy, Fredo Bangs, all them niggas from yeah, Boosie. Yeah, Boosie. Yeah. So there's a Chafalaya Basin. <clears throat> that motherfucker is so long. It's not like a like a like a bridge that goes up and down. It's basically just like a you know it's like it looks like the highway. Do you know the hustle and for crawfish straight. was so big back in the day? My boy had a suburban and he used to dip there, fill this fucking dope ass suburb, suburban up with crawfish and come back, boom, back and forth like he was running dope. Now I'm gonna say like this. Crazy. So what you're saying? That's game. That's real. So any nigga that's listening to this that live out there need to be put on like niggas dropping gems right now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's what we do. So. Crawfish shit is still, it still could be a dope ass hustle. It is. But niggas, it's not like, for instance, you just said that. I just said that a person should use it. Yeah. But will they use it? I don't know. Yeah. Point is, is yes, you can do the exact same thing, especially running it back to Houston. Yeah, you get a bigger motherfucking truck with a cooler or a cooler on the back. You just run that crawfish. And it's only season. seasonal. Yeah, seasonal. yeah, it's exactly seasonal. Exactly right. Yeah, and so if you're the right guy and you know where to go, you can get some that look like little baby motherfucking lobsters. lobsters. Straight exactly. up, exactly. That, that's Ugh. what it is. That's, that's, that's what it is. I don't suck the heads on them, even though I, everyone. Honestly, is. I never have, and you about to say everyone does. I yeah. read about that. I've heard people. Hey, that's where all the spices are and shit. I just can't do this. I've shit. never done it once in my I got life. A, me neither. All that shit looks weird. All the guts and all this uh, shit. I've never done it once yeah. in my entire life. They're like the fat and everything's in there. I'm like, man, and, you I, and I don't really it, like dog. fat. I don't like fat on my steaks. Like I eat my oh, steaks. Oh, I do, man. I love. That See, they say the flavors in the fat. Yeah, like yeah. my like my grandma would cook shit. Like, oh, that's where all the flat that's at. That's all that's where it. all the season is at, babe. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. My I grandma don't... would cut a, a piece of meat and then cut a piece of fat, and that was the bite you got. It was a mix. And I and you know it sound the way you just put it like that in yeah. the context, like it sounds really good. But I, I don't know. I guess I just I don't like chewy shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if, the, if the fat's done right, it melts in your mouth. Straight I've up. heard it, that, but it, how it, true it, is it, that? It's true. I swear you remember, you ever, heard, you ever seen it on a... We're going to go to 555 five, five Steakhouse <laughs> right over here. It's one of my favorite parts. My boys used to fly into town, and every time they'd come into town, they always wanted to go there. Man, they have a 24... Uh, ounce uh 45 day aged bone-in ribeye i swear to you i knew nothing about rich steaks or anything like that but when i did make a little bit of money i knew about this spot and i went over and tried it i'm telling you it's a hundred dollars steak it's worth every fucking penny because I, I can't eat the whole steak i usually bring it home in the morning to make steak and eggs for me and the kids but yeah. i'm telling you fucking fire and i just tried bone marrow what? for the first time too i heard about that and i heard somebody niggas were saying they were disappointed low-key because like it wasn't I guess they were so amped up about it, and it wasn't that much that they even got out of it. It's like a small, oh, yeah, very it's small not that portion. Much. It's inside of the bone. They slice the bone down the middle, and then you, they give you both sides of the bone. But so how was it? Like, what is your? It was very delicious. It was. It's just like fat, but it's a more enriched fat, and it's very, very soft. I mean, when you when you get into it, it's delicious. I'm down I to like try it. that. See, the I thing like is, I like I like exotic shit. I guess I like shit that's different. Like I just don't hear it all day, and you got me kind of sold already. I got <laughs> put on game. I'm trying you, to get a you, bite, like you said earlier. You gotta have a little bit about the fat. I want to buy the bone marrow with dude, it. Dude, the dude says <laughs> you take the bone marrow, you throw it in the fucking pan, then you throw your steak once it liquefies, and you throw it on top of this your steak in there. Makes it even better, juicier. I don't What's know. that movie called? Uh, what is it? Uh, Goodfellas. Oh, one of my favorites. Yeah, one of my favorites too. I, uh, unfortunately, I got on. <laughs> you know, there's some late. Impalas in that motherfucking movie. Oh, I don't know where they come are. Come on now, every old movie I, I, I watch, I'm always looking at Me too. all the old cars, and sometimes I look at them so much, I'm like, they just use that car in this scene. Yeah. And they've been using it again and again and again. You can tell how big the budget was. But anyways, so. I, I don't know if his name was Polly or what it was, but he was like when he was in jail, he was slicing up garlic and oh, so yeah. say it melted in the pan. Yeah, yeah. Is that you true? Slice it thin enough. You know what? I've never. Th I think if you heated it up and the oil was just right, I think you could definitely. Liquefy so it basically garlic. it's going, it's going to liquefy you, in the yeah, oil. Because you would cut it to. I mean, you would if you have a razor blade. If you've ever cut a piece of garlic, I have actually done it, and I because of that movie to see. And, and it, <laughs> it does. It does. Some of it does, but you have to cut it so fucking thin. It's almost like translucent. When you, it, that's how thin it is, you know, and then yes, that takes some time. It does, but um, I love garlic, man. I actually, almost every night I take a garlic and I'll cut the top off of it, and then I just hit it with olive oil, salt, and pepper, and then put it in the oven with my food, and then eat it out. And you just pop them right out. It's, See, it's I need, to, I, need, to, I, need to get, I need to get more precise with my cooking shit. Like I like to cook, you know. What I mean, you know, I got really into it when I was in college, especially because you know that's what I'm trying to, you know. Is a college student, you know, trying yeah. to make ends meet and whatnot. And then my mom in Louisiana, so I'm making all kind of meals that's fire as fuck and they don't cost that much. 
you know what I mean? And they, and they still fire, so everybody's coming to eat with me and whatnot. I love to cook. My wife does not cook, but uh, I, I grew up cooking, so it ain't no motherfucking thing to me. My Everyone always tells me I should open a food truck, but I ain't trying to do all that shit. Yeah, and the, like, like, same thing with me, bro. Everybody tells me I should do this, do that, do this, do that. Like a jack of all trades, not a master at any, and I'm trying to master my fucking craft. But the thing I can't stay away from is motherfucking cars. Yeah. And I'm not gonna stop with the car shit. Like, yeah, and it's I like, it's, it's basically my drug. And like, and, and, and it's, before it was easier because I'd have one and that one would always be up to par. Now it's like, I want one, I'll have cars sitting here to where like, I'll say, I'll tell somebody I don't have transportation right now. Uh, kind of, I'm not even can't How many cars you, you got at the house? Four. You got four? What all you got? So I got the Cadillac DTS, that's my baby right there. That's my yeah. slab, that's my h time baby. Right, right, down, right. Whatever. I feel that, that bitch is banging too. Then I got my 78, that's the one that's, that's I was wanting to cut and whatnot, which yeah. I got all the parts, I got everything, whatever. I got that one, and I got my, uh, what's the other one I got? Oh, my Beamer, my 7 Series Beamer, my white one. I haven't drove, I've been driving that one, but the Beamer was my daily driver for a while. Right, right. But then I started driving that one. Uh, I, I, that one was sitting for like a good year and a half, and I pulled the Beamer out. Yeah. Um, no, no, I, I pulled that one out because I already had the beam route. And then, then the other one, I got my bike, my Cowie, my 636. Oh, nice. Shit, those are fun. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And it's completely custom. My shot to Stump Farm. You know what I'm saying? That's my people. You know, like it's it's legit. You fucking with them, you fucking with the best. That, that's all it is, too. Is that they built your bike or something? Yeah. So with that <laughs> one, so me and him have always been good friends. But then when he did that, I kind of wanted to let him just take the reins because usually I'm always fully involved in my products. Like today, right. before I even came over here, I um, was working on the amp. Like, I'm in the yeah. back. Like, I think I posted a video, too. With him. I'm in the back with him working on it. Like, I don't want you to just tell me what it was. Whatever. So some mechanics... That way you can repair it later on down the road. Right. And the thing is, is like, it, it also shows me how dumb I was being. Like, I'll say that. Like, you know, I'm like, okay, it was so simple, something I could have did. But in this situation, okay, we, it, it, we didn't get it working back the way it needed to be, but we... I had to come over here and do this. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Otherwise, we would have got that shit going, going, going and popping, too. You like, know, um, <laughs> Sage, the Donk Master... <coughs> he races the donks. They call him Donk Master. His name's Sage. Mm -mm. Dude, you got to check out his page. They're racing big bodies on big wheels. I know about all that, but how do you feel about that? It's dope as fuck. I didn't, I think even, it's dope I didn't as know fuck. shit about it, but then I went to a race with all them fools. First off, his whole crew's dope as fuck. His family, his homeboys, uh, uh, he's on there, goes by uh, Rags to Riches or something on in, from Vegas. All that, man, everybody was so cool. I felt like the vibe of just kicking it at the races with everybody and chopping it up and shit was probably 80% of how I liked it. And then the other fucking 20% was the races. I mean, them motherfuckers do work. Do you know that a, a Sage's reaction time on off the tree racing is equal to professional racers and it's faster than... Oh, some. yeah, well, that yeah, yeah. That's insane, believable. Bro. I mean, of course, if you're on your shit, you're on your shit. Like, he, he's I've sat it. there and played. Like, you can buy these little trees that you just play with at your house and not even have it on Oh, have you them must on have those motherfuckers. I've, he's oh, got yeah. his own weed strain. Yeah, yeah. I got my own I weed play with strain, all by that the shit. way, everybody. Y'all go check out my boy at uh, LB Smokers Club on Instagram. It's a delivery service. Get that Long Beach Lloyd Private Reserve. Shit's fire as fuck. All of them... All the strains are 30% plus uh, THC. Y'all need to check that out. You need to start smoking again, too. This motherfucker, LB Lotto ain't playing, I promise you. So good. Yeah, it's, it's funny because I'm good. the only motherfucker, like I'm like a Craig on Friday, but Craig ended up shifting and started smoking again, though. <laughs> yeah. And you, did By you ever next smoke Friday, weed or not? Yeah, I kind of did. I got crazy stories I can go on about. Like, I, I kind of I started to get into it, but then, like, I'm, I'm just, I think so much. My, my gears are always just turning so fast, and I feel like when it slows me down, it's just not like I don't know. Like it just, like it just, like I, I feel like it just slows me down too much to where I can't just yeah. be I'm so where I fast am. all the time. It just puts me at what I think. So is maybe normal. it would be it, but then people always tell me, you know, you gotta be the right person, <clears throat> isn't that? I mean, I kind of, I, I get that, but um, I, maybe just my circle is not what I think it is. Maybe the vibes are. I start seeing different yeah, vibes. No, I have no fucking needs idea. To smoke weed. I mean, but shit, I enjoy a, it. Sometimes though, I, I remember at the time when I when I did do it, there was a little. And when I get into something, you know, I I, I I'm in the fest. You contact high over here from the that no noise. nigga <laughs> that happened last time. We was inside, well, and I'm looking at you. I'm like, okay, I think I'm getting a little high. <laughs> I'm you like, I'm, I didn't want to start tripping. Like I told you, I started tripping. Like I didn't want to start tripping. I'm like, I think I, I, this shit, I'm starting from the high. And like I didn't went to like doobie session on you know, nigga buying a few pounds of this. Because hey, we didn't have any fans on. And they the smoking sound or anything, the whole. So yeah. you probably were just getting that yeah. raw right off so the joint. They, they they be smoking like the whole time. And like when you walk in a doobie session, like it's just on some extra. You shit. See my fucking shirt. This is actually from a friend of mine. They own this uh, grill called the Bakery Doobieville. Mm. It's relevant. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah super relevant. Sure. Yeah. So like. 
my point in bringing that the doobie set situation is I was going there to purchase product for I'm gonna leave it at that. So I, I end up going in there and like I fucking just start filling my throat. And my other boy I'm with, he's also like, you know, he don't smoke at all. Yeah. Like like period. Like, you know, we we're very sharp at what we do and everything else, but he don't smoke either. But we we you know we he flew out of state. Like we both on some shit trying to, you know, cop some shit for certain reasons. Right. So he feels the same things I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. And like <clears throat> I can feel it. Then, then we smelling niggas get the bag open. We smelling everything, everything else over and over again. That's fun. And then like I start my nose gets a little congested, everything else, and I start feeling like nigga, <laughs> we got contacts. Like like I, I can feel it. Like I can tell. Like I'm moving. But it wasn't bad though. The thing. My favorite. So thing I think is when I do something, I over. Smoke. I think I overindulge in what I do. I yeah. If it's gonna do like we talking about the low riders, like, yeah. like my shit gonna be hot. Like the stuff I got from my '78, it's hot. Yeah, no, for sure. You so gotta, I wanted you do to do what you something. Gotta do it well, that's for sure. Don't right. Do it so at the all. same thing, like so that little bitty feeling, I felt it because I felt it before. I recognized it, but when I first smoked, so my story what is. What you have like, to do is take one puff and. You told wait me that. Like you know, what? I took your advice and I did try it again one more time, and I was like. One puff though, that's it. Well, the thing is though, the nigga was rolling like a fucking gorilla thumb. That shit was like big. He was like, "The money." You're gonna be good Fuck with me, that. and he was like, "Put yeah. it up like some sage." She was like, "I'm telling you, I promise you'll be you good already, with me." I, that's already warning sign yeah. number one. I'd have been like, "Nah, I'll, I'll just take like one little puff." But if you just take one little puff, I promise you're good. Dude. Be just I hit it, and I know peep this though. I hit it, and I felt like decent. Yeah, I peep nigga already. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I'm always about that's so doing it outside. I hit it, know. and I'm like. I, I don't know, it came on, the way it came on, I had good vibes around me, it, everything was good. So then I'm like, I end up asking the nigga if he got some more. So then he pulled out, and, and I know weed, like I know yeah. good weed. So I'm like, this shit's fire. So we light it again, and then like this time, I could feel a little bit more, but I'm fine still. But then like, we're working on bikes and shit, we're a mechanic shit, where's the mechanic shop? So then they go outside and leave me by, leave me by myself, and that's where the problem came in. I'm like, what the f- Okay, you Start know what? Start panicking. <laughs> like, so what's this? Like, smoking, you know, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, for sure. That shit. That's how it wasn't that bad, though, because I was drinking, though. The time that I had, like, a little trip was when I was, like, in high school. Because, like I said, I would feel it, but I probably wouldn't feel it, because, like, I have a very high tolerance for things. Right. So, like, when the time they wanted the hot box, I mean, they must have had a bunch of niggas in the whip. And they put the, all the windows up. They, they got an 18 in the trunk. You know, you know about the 18. <laughs> yeah, you fuck, of course. Time. They got an 18. He had screw music on too, so it's slowing everything down. I'm hitting the shit, and they passing a bunch back to back. And they called a baby Dro at the time. You no, know, definitely no Dro was a big in the thing. Car, no was nah, I wasn't off. even drinking like that at the time. Damn. So they must have fucking. I'm hitting. I'm like, I got out of the car. I'm taking my school shirt so my mama don't smell my shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Throwing in the trunk, and I'm just hitting. The, I'm just hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. And I get in the car, I'm like, give me no, give me no, because I'm trying to feel something. Right, I'm like, y'all right. niggas is bullshit, y'all tripping. So he's like, just wait a minute, the big one gonna come around in a minute. Nigga with the big voice, I even sit yeah. next to me. So then, as it's before it comes around, um, I let my throat feel kind of dry. <laughs> <laughs> he was, and the nigga named Lil D was in the front. He's a nigga with the 18, whatever else. He was like, hit this water real quick. He gave me, so he gave me some water, a little design, you know, drink some water. <clears throat> Sitting there, I'm looking back and forth, and then that shit just you. it hit me. I'm looking to my left. I'm looking. Then now I'm noticing things more. Right. So I already notice things too much. Maybe that enhances what I my brain already too like too much. Maybe like yeah. it's almost too good for my own like too much for my own good. So now I'm like, do I look like these niggas? They look dead. Like these niggas all look dead as fuck. Like do I look like this? And that's when I started tripping. Yeah. And I swear to God, I must have felt like let me out. Like like you know like how Trey was, but I don't know pussy shit. But anyway, like how Trey was, I'm like yo, let me out. And then they was like, what's wrong? Like, just let him out, just let him out. He gonna start, like, let him out. He just, he gonna start tripping. So then I just felt like I just dove out the car. And all I remember was my white Air Force Ones on the street running around a little bit low key. I'm like, what the fuck? And the nigga was laughing. It was like, D, you're okay, trust me. So then like, it ended up just like chilling out over time. And then like, when I get high, like it lashes me for like the day. No, it's and, and I fuck. feel good though. But the thing is though, after that, I wanted to try it again, and yeah. I, I stepped into it a few different times, and I got it, I started, I, I think I had a lot, the lighter I had, a torch lighted up, and a little dice with the sparkles in it, and it lights up, and then got, he was like, you gotta wear shade so they don't know you're hot. You gotta get that visine. <laughs> so I'm wearing the shade, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and like, I realized, okay, if I take more than like about six big ass hits, because I always overdo it, like right now I'm about to overdo this drink, I, I always yeah. overdo it. So. What are you drinking? I'm drinking Goose, Grey Goose. That's what it is. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Like Hennessy. <laughs> yeah, like that's the other thing too. Because white gets you hype, brown gets you down. As far yeah. as alcohol goes. Right. So I mean, is brown. That the rule? I don't really that's, drink. So well, I don't know shit about that's well. That's yeah. That that's a rule to me. Like like, but a lot of people feel like brown gets them more up. But I'm also like, 
I'm naturally just up like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, so, sure. so if anything, it might chill me out. Like, that's a family reunion type shit. Or we kicking and knocking some bones or something. Like that's when I when I drink a little bit of brown. But when I do drink brown, now since I've been more like a cigar enthusiast, I drink like some aged ass fucking um whiskey or I saw your meme. Or you smoke one cube and now you're a guitar oh, professional. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, or, yeah, or yeah, cigar yeah. Exactly. But I mean you can't even get Cuba's motherfucker. What the fuck are you talking about? Like they're illegal. Are they? Yeah, see, can people you go don't to know Cuba, it. if you go to Cuba, can you get them? You can't bring them back. Are they, JFK? But you can smoke them there. Yeah, you can smoke them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They got the real they're ones. Legal, they're legal almost because, everywhere. But I heard if you go to Cuba, they'll say you fake ones on the street. They ain't even real ones. And then uh, you don't get the real ones. Like you I, won't get the one that you want, but it's going to be Cuban if it was made. You know what I mean? The point is, just, that's just where it's grown if at. If you get a great Cuban cigar, what what makes it good? What makes okay. it so good? What makes it the, the one everybody craves? So after you smoke so many cigars, <laughs> you can tell what, like, what you're, like who you are and what you are as far as that. So like me, I like spicy shit, as you know. Yeah. I forgot the fucking oh, sauce, the hot nigga. Sauce. Damn, I'm ready. And you know what's funny? I was gonna grab a bottle just to have Did it anyway. Try it? Yeah, I tried it. Yeah, yeah, I tried it. Bro, it's a controlled substance. Is it really? I can't wait. That to shit try is this so. Shit. Would like, you put it on popcorn and shit? Well, chicken? I try to eat it like normal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that shit. man. I, I used Whew. to get this stuff called Bur from my buddy. He has a, a a hot sauce company called Burn with your boy, and. I pour that shit on the chicken and just drink. Man, that fucking shit I always shit do is that. So good, it's for dude, the people man. think like I'm like, oh, he just wants to have the spicy shit. No, it's a flavor thing with me. Yeah, and it's a flavor. I like that Louisiana hot sauce, that old prison style one. Too. I can I easily love that eat shit. that shit like nothing. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Too. Some people say it's spicy. It. That's what I'm me saying. Too. See, I feel the same way. But this shit right here, nigga, they said that in a minute. This shit right yeah. here, nigga, that shit is different. I'm is telling it? you, it's way different. Like you put one drop on a on a chip. It'll resonate, but I'll keep eating it though. I'm like addicted right, in a right. weird way too. I'll keep eating it, and as you keep eating it, it's gonna make Ears it worse. Start ringing and shit. Well, what happens is you know, nigga, my like you're gonna of course start sweating. You know, it's gonna start. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it's a good thing though. You I know like what it. Mean? It clears up your sinuses. It, it's really a good, good. thing. Yeah, Honestly, spices are a good like thing. A spices are a good thing for you. But that shit is like I'm like okay. I feel the same way. I eat the hottest shit. Period. But that shit is on some extra shit. Really, well, I'm I telling you right now. Trying this shit. I, 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 you fucking lucky. I was, but I, the thing is, is that I was so wrapped I was around. I hit it on the motherfucking episode. I was gonna yeah, three or not drop, like three that. Drop to the top. Oh, now he want to talk shit. Three drop to the top. Now he want to say that. <laughs> no, no. I don't, is it that hot? You can't take three drops of it. I don't fuck around. You know, I wouldn't tell you that. Just tell you. Damn. And even if I, if it wasn't my element, like I like I, I low key like spice, I still is wouldn't even talk like about this. It comes in a Tabasco this. bottle. It comes you... in a big ass bottle too. That's or the other it, weird thing or about it. Or does it have a big opening where you pour it out? Or uh, is that like that little control? It's in the middle. It drops. It drips, but it's big drips. It's like right, Louisiana right, right. hot sauce. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that one drip is gonna look much fucking bigger. Tabasco, bigger. you gotta shake the shit out. Tabasco, of to get I can put out. a lot to where I start getting a little spiced out, but, but like barely, it takes a lot. That's like a baby hot. But I use different sauces for different things. Like one of my best friends, what he does, he's like my brother. What he does is he uses Frank's Red Hot. Like he likes that on like everything. Yeah, Frank's Red Hot's good. It's and like high. it's just a generic thing to go to. I don't have a generic thing to go to. Like I just had Wobble Grill. I had to have the right fucking. Tapatio would yeah. be like my easy. I like Tapatio and everything too. Tapatio. That's drinkable too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Funny. Niggas about that was drinkable. drinkable. It's funny because you're you're really right. I'm just well, wondering I'm, if anyone I'm else. And white. I, if you had kimchi, like Korean kimchi, the spicy. Kimchi. No, I oh, haven't. Oh man, my grandmother used to make it so hot. My friends would come over. And, I made it for my. Uh, I had a neighbor when I the first time we me and my uh when I bought my house in Costa Rica, my next door neighbor, I made it for him. That motherfucker was I swear to God he came out, he's like, Why you make this? It bring pain. I was <laughs> like, Hey, I thought all Latin's like spice. It I thought you could handle pain. I promise you. <laughs> I love this shit. My little girl used to eat it like crazy. I mean it's super spicy. A lot of people can't handle this shit for my family's recipe. But the funny thing is when I first ate it too, that day, I don't usually have that many rainy days, bad days. The people, starts people, watering thinking people get so mad good. whenever I'm like like bro, you're so positive. Like you're, you got so much going for you, even if it doesn't seem like that sometimes. Look, like, that's how you keep positivity going. Negativity yeah, but, breeds yes, negativity. But, exactly. And, and but every now and then, like I have a few, like a rainy day or some shit like that. Like, I just feel kind of down, bro. Like on some weird shit. Uh, that's natural. Everyone has to have it. You can't just have it. I feel like I should be stronger to even day. let that even happen, though. Like, nah, you got but to. But it still you're, happens you're sometimes. You got to learn how to adjust to that because I, I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not. I have a days that uh, you know shit happens and. But this is the thing too, like when you see, yeah, I know. The thing is, know, it's like when up. you see me or I see you, even if I'm having a bad, like, I think when we first met, I wasn't having the best day ever. But the thing is, is Where that. Where did we first fucking meet at? We met at the goddamn park down the street, down the street over there. A video I'm, shoot or something, no? Uh, it was Six Friday. No, no, Seven, seven Friday. Oh. Or what was it? Was it Six Friday? I think it was Six Friday. It six, might, six I don't even remember. Well, yeah, what is yeah. the other Impala that's the one with the, what was that, a Caprice? 
it might have been this. It might it might have been Six Friday. It something might like have that. been, yeah. Yeah, Six Five Six Six Six. six. It might have been something like that. Yes, yeah, so we met over there during that day, and it was a an event. Like, and the weather was a beautiful as it always is. It was nah. amazing. Had a good ass time. Yeah, it's always good over there. There's actually going down in Rosie's right now. The boys are over there. So, half of them are at Junipero, and then half of them are at Rosie's. They're all split up, but uh, there's a, everyone just goes out there and chills out, shows off the ride a little bit. My 64, I just finished up that Hustle 64. It's not finished up, but I finished up to what I have right now, but I have a bunch more stuff coming for the um, uh, blue bandana parts. I ordered a bunch more parts just to tie everything in, because once I started getting it on there, it looks so sick. Yeah, I was just telling somebody about it the other day. I'm like, nah, he has the card I was in. Um, Cause I never listened to that higher song that much. You know what? I, uh, but not, I, yeah, me either. Me, I, 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 I didn't really just fuck with it but i let it play the other day and nip is that i thought he had like a little piece of a verse on there but no he actually has he runs the verses yeah um john legend of course is always a beast but i like to listen to certain shit at certain times um and i let that shit play that shit was going so hard i didn't even know that it was the car i, I, I know you didn't that's then, what i was getting to so i let so I, told me right so i told my boy that it was in there he's like oh the blue one so the nigga probably i don't know five nine i'm like no it's not that one it might be. i didn't really see the video That's i just Tracy's know what car. i just know what the car it was nine. i'm like yeah. it was not blue if it is it's something that i don't know about but it's, it, it ain't blue and then um he was like oh there was another one in there I'm like that's the one the white yeah, one the white six four yeah yeah that car was in good cop bad cop too with ice cube do you see that it was in a bunch of shit. People shoot me videos of it all the time. It was actually in that Flavors Boozy video I was in when Boozy was driving my 6.4 when I first got it. I thought that was the banana looking one. That was, that was mine was in there, but if you look on the side, a guy and his grill passed by, and that's, the, that's my car. It wasn't then, obviously, it was theirs, and then Compton Rick actually bought it from that couple, but it was in the video. I didn't even know till later I was watching it, and my kids wanted to watch it, and I saw it go by, and I saw it, I was like, damn. That's, that's my ride right there. That's the one I got. And then I hit uh, Compton Rick up. I'm like, did you get it from this couple? He's like, yeah, I did. I said, damn, I should have hit him up that day. I didn't know he was selling the motherfucker, man. I could have rolled home with it. But, uh, yeah, it was, that was a dope video doing that. So what I saw that you, uh, you're you coming out with something soon, right? Yeah, and I'm doing the 70s thing. And, and the thing is, it's like it's kind of bittersweet because not, I don't even call it bittersweet. It's nice because the, um, the 78 that I'm working on, see, what I did was, Rather than just, uh, it already kind of looked pretty, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, looked, it looked decent. But I made sure mechanically it was perfect to so the parts car that I bought for it only had like 63,000 original miles on it. Yeah. So that engine went in there and I put sea foam in it and Marvel Mystery Oreo and all kind of shit. It, it ran yeah. fine already, but yeah. I just did that anyway just to like clean out the cylinder heads. And did it work? Did it. <laughs> that shit, uh, first of all, a bunch of white smoke comes out, obviously, whatever else, but yeah. then like, the Still car runs better. No, no, no. That was just like that. Was, that no. Before it was perfect. The car ran <clears> fine <throat> to other people, but I know my yeah. shit. This is my bitch. So like, I'm, I'm a. You know what I mean? That's very right, important. Right, right. And you put that shit in there and it cleaned it all out. So it was running fine, like I said before. Yeah. And then after I did that, it um, it literally ran like a whole different fucking beast. I put I I, I put fresh oil in it, oil in it, obviously, and after I put the oil in it, it fucking um, after I drove it for like. 3,000 miles. Not even, no, 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 I lied, I lied. It was like 1,500 miles. When I um, took the dipstick out, the shit was damn near still like clear. Not clear, but like that, you know, that pretty yeah, gold color. That's dope, though. That pretty shit. gold color I'm talking about. That never happened. It still looked like it wasn't black. Right, So right. the engine that was in there originally, because that engine blew, that also set me back. So that the engine that was in there, it was fine. But one day I was doing a lot of extra shit. I'm going to leave it at that. And, it, and that engine ended up blowing. Um, well, it would run, but it ran with a miss. Like had a knock in and it went out. So then I put that one in there and like it runs. Funny thing is, I, I don't know if I manifested this or just because of me being who I am. I was watching a video on my car. Like, like, I, I, like there's people that have them like from the showroom floor that day and it only has like less than 10,000 original miles on I've it. I've never had a brand new car in my entire life. That's, you know what, me neither, now that I think about it. Cause I, you know, we could, I'm saying we, cause I feel like you have to stay on my side. I could get like a fucking Ultima or something like something brand new, but I'm, I, I could, no, but yeah, I, no, I never have. It's so expensive, I need some, man, when you go And then, then it's like it. you're spending so much money on something. Like, for instance, that, that DTS right there, that car's a $56,000 car. Damn. Exactly. Brand new? And, and, and Brand new. And and that's not even with the options. I have the best one with the GM package. I have a few extra horses. I have seat massagers, coolers, heaters, all that shit in there. That and it's, so. yeah, it, it's like perfect. Like, that's the car that Cadillac meant for you to drive at that time for that Maybe model. I should go get and, an SUV from there. I want all those features. Yeah, so what I did, this is an old one, too. This is an older one. 
Yeah. The new ones, shit, features, features, like that's, that's, you're going to have features out the ass, you ain't going to use I got to sell the vet that I have the, because it's only two seater. I had just, luckily I had just sold my uh, Lexus to get an SUV and then unfortunately my mom passes so I had to use that money to pay for the Corvette. Mm. So I'm like, fuck, because the Corvette was worth more than what she owed. So I was like, well, I think it's a good investment. So I went ahead and paid it's it good. off. It's good. I think you should keep it. I can't, man. It's got too much money in there. I need really? that money back. Yeah. Everyone fucking thinks I'm like Mr. You're right. I know. Yeah. No, honestly, I, though, I, promise you, I'm I'm, I learned a lot from you. Yeah. For sure, because like I feel like I would want to because of that. Like, I would I, rather have that money in the stock market than in that car because that car's not going to grow as much as it's not. What, not even. Have you seen? First I, of all, you said as much. It's not going to grow at all like right, that. Right, right. So like, 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 I would have you to like, put money. it up and completely save it. Like, for, you don't put your money in banks. You don't do that. Like, like if you, because in the banks, you're doing what we're talking about. They just ain't telling you. Have you seen? Bitcoin and all the different uh, uh, yeah all the cryptocurrencies and all that shit like that. Like, I've been putting my shit into a lot of electric vehicles. What kind down, of shit? All I was doing was buying, bro. I am yes killing that's what I'm ditto yeah for, I mean killing like, it for me not like I put it in there. Fucking yeah shit yeah killing it, I learned as I learned me. you know what I mean I learned what I learned and yeah. then it was able to make me be able to fix different things to pull different things out mm -hmm. and the thing is once again emotional attachment the fact that I built it all like okay I started with 700 and now I got seven racks it's like. I wanted to keep growing, and I did this. They're like, nah, nigga, you did it once. You can do it again. Yeah, absolutely. Like, the 65 SS rag I just got, this will continue to grow. A motherfucking Range Rover exactly. will not. Exactly. You know I mean? So, like, nowadays, an older vehicle is the investment. You know what I mean? That that's what's going to keep on growing. A new one, for instance, okay, another example. So, oh, I didn't even finish my story with the DTS. So, that $56,000 car, I got it, and it looks crispy. And yeah. I must have spent... About I think I got it for like it, they, they listed at at ten, but I came with cash. I got it for like seventy five hundred dollars. That's a pretty good deal. So if and now it has one hundred thirty six thousand miles on it. That's a good deal. So if you knew anyone that was about to come into the car game since you've been doing it on your side, what advice would you give somebody? My advice is know what the fuck you want, a hundred percent. Know what you want. Impala. Yeah, <laughs> I already know Impala. Know what you want, want and know every fucking thing about that car. And if you know it like better, you know yourself. And if you don't, then you don't want it that bad. So like I, I like knew Impalas. that that like I knew specifically I wanted everything needed to be wood grain. I need to have every option. I need to have the GM package, whatever else. So when I got there, the guy that was selling it, he does good business. He didn't. Everyone thinks okay, it's a Cadillac. It's gonna all have leather and it's gonna all be no. So it has every. They all have that, but they all have other options like the things oh, I'm describing. Yeah, yeah no, so for sure. So I was showing him stuff he didn't even know, and then when he fucking went on Cargo Rules or Blue Book, everything else was also too get your goddamn Blue Book. You yeah. got to get it. No, you definitely. <laughs> you got to get it for trading value or less if it's a new car, and if it's an old car, you like got to know your value and know where to look at it. And I highly suggest. The car don't buy out everything. of state unless you can go look at it yourself or have somebody else look at it because you take a lot of chances buying things out of state and not being able to see it. Sometimes I've gotten wins, sometimes I've gotten losses, but it does happen. Exactly. So you get your blue book, but you also the the most imperative thing when you're buying a vehicle is the Carfax. You have to have the Carfax. Oh yeah, definitely. It shows everything. So that one I knew what old ass man had it, which I like Cadillac. So it was, I'm lucky as far as that. Like I mean, like like old people usually get it and take damn good care of it and barely drive it. Yeah. So I, I was I was able to get it with low mileage and everything else. I seen it had one owner. He serviced it at Cadillac and that's it. I seen whatever problem he had, he fixed. So dope. So then the other car that I have to use for an example is my seven, the one I was talking about, my my, my BMW. Yeah. So that one, that car was ninety four thousand dollars when it came out. And that one, I kind of Bad. finessed that one in a sense too, though. But that one, I ended up getting that one for a little under 20 racks. Yeah. And that's that's nuts. That's yeah, some nuts no, shit. Sure. That's so a motherfucker that had the bread, went and spent, whether they paid on it or not, you're still wasting yeah. money. No, and I got sure. the same car. I got the I got the same car, and you took goddamn good care of it, like I would have. Yeah, because I would have too, especially. If yeah, I exactly. That of and money. it's beautiful. I mean, granted, you can you won't find some shit that's just trash, but I that, that, if you know what you want, you know what you're looking for, that won't happen. When you buy a car, you get it. I people educate always want to bring yourself for sure on the educate car. yourself, yeah, and then people always want to bring a mechanic. I would advise that if you're not like you know a car guy like how I am, but if you do go get something that you're not putting a huge investment in, what you do is you pull up to the car, open up all the doors, the trunk, the hood, start the car up. Let it run. Um, Put it on a lift. It's highly recommended. If you can, but if you can't, if you're on the streets doing what you're <clears> doing, <throat> which most motherfuckers won't probably be able to do that, you know, you, you let it run. And then what's go and by the time you're done looking at all the little knickknacks, whatever little things that may bother you, that, that can also allow you to price haggle, the car would have overheated by that point. 
You know what I mean? If it's been like 10, 15 minutes, if, no matter if it's summer or winter, check the AC and check the heater, and then go take it for a drive. Even if you're not a speed racer, drive it normal first, you know, drive it around the block, you know, and then make sure like the gears are shifting smoothly. And then you floor it one time, not because you're trying to like see the power, or whatever else. You want to make sure it downshifts correctly. Oh, absolutely. You want to make sure the transmission. You're checking that downshift. Performs. I always do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I'm about to buy this bitch. I'm going to drive it how I want to. If I feel like drifting it, I will. And they tell you, you okay, this. I mean? It's not like I, if I come to look at it, it's not like I don't have the money to get it. You know what I mean? So, exactly. Um, have it just the people you want to call to. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I'm insured in anything I drive for 30 days, so you ain't got to worry about it. So have your people that you know, like, 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 like Henry Ford wasn't the smartest man in the world, but look what he built and what he did. And I'm a Chevy man, too. Mm. But either this way it goes, Henry Ford, Chevy's. I'm a Chevy man, but Henry Ford, he basically had a, like, he got sued because he, like, built so much back then that, like, how is he doing this? And what they did was, is they, they were like, okay, you know, you can't answer who did this and who did that. Like, talking about, like, history questions. Like, he doesn't know any of that shit. He doesn't yeah. care. She's like, but I tell you this, though. I have a button on my desk that can hit up, I can hit up anyone I know, basically, and tap in, and they're going to have the answer. So I have did my resources. Did you watch Ford vs. Ferrari, the movie? I did, and I just did, and that I'm glad I just watched good. it. good. That was a damn good movie. So why I'm bringing that up is because if you do go in, buy something, and let's say something happens, they're like, oh, no, that's just making this because it is, baby. All you got to do is worry about change. You know, you go, I got a mechanic, too. You can pay $100 to change that. No. Yeah. Have your button that you press, which is going to be on your phone. Call your person that you know that knows what they know. And then they'll be able to tell you if that's true or if it's not. Yeah, definitely have backup. Whether you send them pictures nowadays with the way technology, send them pictures of it, something's leaking or whatever else. Like, yeah, because some things are really minor. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like right now, like on my 7.8, the only, like, like I, I, I revamped the whole thing mechanically. Mechanically, it's a champ. I got to pass smog, like, legally. You know what I mean? That's for yeah. the 7.8, that's hard. With the original ship. So... The only thing that I have on that car that I haven't done is the transmission gasket leak transmission fluid. That is right. an easy fix. Yeah, I'm gonna do it myself. I must. Fix. I don't remember how much I paid for the parts. That means it was that cheap. I must have spent. I spent more for all the quarts of fucking transmission fluid. I must have spent like around uh, I don't know sixty dollars or something. Yeah, it's but, not and I'm gonna just take them all out, anymore. clean it out, and put it back up there. That's something quick and easy that I can fix. Yeah. See, but I know that already. If you yeah, don't no, know you that, do ask it, questions. It. It ain't no like in my, people always say you know the cliche. You know, any dumb question is, um, no, no, there is no such thing as a dumb question. Yeah, there is no such thing. But in my opinion, there is no such thing as a dumb question unless you know the answer. That means, then why are you even asking it, basically? Right, no, that I mean, because sometimes people just be wanting to make, just want to just talk to just talk, especially in my industry. Like, niggas just be wanting to talk to talk to make me to like them and all kinds of no, you, yeah, you, you deal do. with the you same hear, shit. You, you know what everything. I'm talking about. You definitely do. So give everybody all your social media plugs so you can let them know where to contact you and hit you up. Yeah, so dmoneyjohnson.com, very simple. You can go in there, tap in with everything I'm doing, subscribe, whatever else. And then as far as all social media, social, any social media handle, you're looking at one and only D Money. The number one and only D Money. And that's what it is. That's your Instagram and all that, yeah. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat is dmoneyjohnson23. As far as music platforms, just search D Money Johnson and you got it. Yeah, you can look him up on Pandora. I got his channel on there for sure. So anybody, like reaching out to anybody that is in the music industry and you were, you know, somebody was wanting to, somebody's reaching out to you and they're saying, look, D-Money, I've, I've got some rhymes. I want to get into the music business. What would you tell them? What, would, what advice, how would you lead them? I would tell them to make sure it's what they really want to do. They have to make sure it's what they want to do. Yeah. Because if you're looking at it as like it's fun or like it's a quick way out or whatever other minute reason, yeah. then you aren't going to make it. It's not unless you hit the, get the winning lottery ticket and you shouldn't bank on your life with a winning lottery ticket. Right. So you have to make sure that you know what you want to do and you're going to sacrifice, make a lot of sacrifices and do what you got to do to get to the top. Would you say that Post Malone hit the lottery? <sighs> One night on uh, SoundCloud or whatever it was and then he wakes up and he's a megastar? I don't really, I, I, was, I was about to engage with that, but I don't want to, because now maybe it's a story that I don't know, but he might have, but it's that's possible. That's what I heard. It's, it's, that, the lottery thing happens all the time, and that's what, and it, a lot of times so it happens when people are trash. What could you say that did get the lottery? Because I, I don't know. Like, okay. How would you say, like, who's someone that just came out and was like, boom? Because that would be one person that I do know, like that dude. Jay Quan, everybody I, in the club getting tipsy. Oh yeah, okay. Was that a, was he a one song mate? Was there or the ba yeah, other songs? basically like a lot of times the artists it happens nowadays too. Um, they'll put out something that gets it, it generates um, an, enough of an awareness and they you know they relate something to it. So then 
it becomes a one hit wonder situation and they get the bread and that's all they really cared about and then you don't hear from them again i noticed a lot of bar songs blow the fuck up that one song closing time that like fucking i don't know what kind of song it is but they play it all the time at bars <laughs> When it's closing, I'm like, well, it's, this see, it's like stuff like song? that too. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And you can even try to like make something like that. that doesn't mean you're gonna hit that lot. You, like, it's literally a winning lottery ticket. Absolutely. But like, where are those artists? Like, are they on the Billboard every year? Like Drake just got, you know, a lot of niggas don't fuck with Drake. But you know, the nigga numbers, people a lot of numbers don't. Nigga be on fucking. He's the artist of the decade. Like, like you know, he done fucking ran this shit from like forever. He's no a, matter he is within a genius, all the haters and everything genius. else. Even well, Jay Z. Really Jay Z is music, a business think, genius. Oh yeah, he is. But I would say both of them are very, very. Smart um, I can name a bunch of business geniuses. So I can remember. I can name a bunch of people five for important things like geniuses that. Geniuses that you would have. Okay, so you you got you got Jay Z, you got um, Master P. Uh, Master you P. got um, I'm on the spot. I'm on the spot. What we got? What we got? Uh, Diddy. Yeah. You got Diddy. You got... What, what about Lil Wayne's guy? Uh, Birdman. Birdman. Business genius. I mean, he, he needs to tap into a little more things, but as far as music-wise on some Motown shit, 100%. Yeah. Business genius as far as that. Um, who else we got? We got um, Rick Ross. You know, he got a bunch of wing stops. He got a fucking. I heard that. I didn't know if it was true or not. Yeah, he got like a... It? Yes. He had the well, I went to wing stop the other day, and that shit sucked. I got... <laughs> there was hardly anything on my fucking wings. And I don't I really like, the honestly. Chicken. There was no darling chicken in there. I, I'm guilty. I did get boneless. I know everybody says the bitches get boneless, but I was in a hurry. I like and boneless kind of too, bro, because like I can just eat that shit. But it's better, <laughs> like, it's like, better off the I gotta bone. Be, and I be, I be, yeah, because yeah, you're getting flavor, more, and it's more real. I mean? It's not yeah. processed like that. It's but I'm not, I, I don't really just, I feel like I'm wasting it because I don't just clean the fuck out of it. Like, I got my partners who eat bone, like, like bone in shit, and it'll be on some elephant graveyard like they just like yeah. there's nothing on the bone whatsoever oh, i can't do that no i can't clean all the, the tendons up. all that shit Ugh, nah, i feel like i'm wasting I, I just eat the white meat and then get it most that's of what i'm saying edges, so i'm gonna eat crispies. white meat i'm gonna eat the white meat and try to go with you know who i know is a valuable resource as far as that yeah. like i like b-dubs like, yeah, B dubs is straight to me. Yeah, that's And they great. got that Reaper sauce. We're going to have to go do a podcast. I'm ready, man. I'm trying to try these motherfucking Reaper hot sauce you're talking about. The Reaper sauce is really good. Um, the, well, the, well, put like this, the one that I just got is nothing compared to the shit that B-Dubs. And B-Dubs is way too hot, too, oh. especially if they over-soak it. So at the end of every podcast, we usually do a little five-word chop-up. I give you the word. You just tell me what you think. I think you remember from the first time. So oh, yeah, the first yeah, yeah. word's going to be goals. Goals. Goals are very important. Like Goals are something that you have to you set them to make sure you create a realistic timeline to get to where you want to be and accomplish what, they, what it is you got to accomplish. They're, they're, like, they're like the blueprint for your life, in my opinion. I agree. Happiness. Happiness is one of the most important things. Like, you have to be happy beyond anything. Like, like Happy is the most important That's part. why, like, if you, have, if you had to pick a job, it's like, what job would you do to where you're going to always be happy and you would even do it for free? That's what's going to give you happiness and the people you surround yourself is going to give you happiness. Happiness is important. If you ain't got happiness, you ain't got shit. Yeah, I know. Happiness is the most important. Hustle. Hustle is something that a lot of people don't got, but maybe you can train yourself to have it. If it's for the right thing, you're going to hustle for the things that you truly want. I um, every day. And hustle is going to, and then if you, if you go piggybacking off the other one, if you got the happiness, you're going to hustle for what makes you happy. So the hustle should never, ever end. If it ends you, you're doing something fucking wrong. Impact. Impact is basically, it's energy. And when I, when I hear the word impact, I think of energy. So like if I knock the fuck out of somebody, um, how much impact my punch has is what's going to determine as if I it is going to determine whether or whether or not I knock the fuck out of this person. Right. So the same thing goes back with the goals. So I have to make a huge impact and take an action on my goals, and then inevitably I'm going to impact the entire world and everything I wanted to, if. I play my cards right. You gotta make an impact. I say in everything you do, you fucking, when you go to it, treat it as if you're kicking the motherfucking door down. Like you have to come in and make your presence known. You have to make your position. You have to stick to it. Um, success. Success is a big word that I had. Like, it's not a, like a big word like that. But the thing is, is that everyone looks at it as you got everything. And that's not what it is I've learned. With success is just chasing a worthy, like, like making progress towards a worthy goal. So as long as you are making progress, being happy, making an impact, those are some great words. 
to me. Making it, yeah, they all they all go together perfectly. Yeah. That's success. As long as you are doing everything I just said, that is success right there. Like in its own, and the success is going to keep growing and growing and growing. And the people that didn't already know that were already slow, now they're going to see that. Like like yeah. like then to them at the to once it gets if you were doing it because of the previous reasons, you're already successful, and a lot of people may recognize that. To the motherfuckers that think success is a lot of things and Gold, worldly jewelry, things and all that, all that shit, other stuff, yeah, that you get to sure. a point to now where you have that, so inevitably you're still, now you're successful for those motherfuckers too. Yeah. So success, success is just doing you and doing you the best. Be the best, best version of your fucking self. Absolutely. I think success is being able to provide everything you can for your family and being able to continue to provide for them with everything they need. Medical, exactly. food, housing, it's, clothing. You're housing. right. That's that's success. I mean, now, being a superstar right. with mega rich, ex excessive success, yes. But I'm not saying it's over excessive. I mean, do what you do. If you could afford to buy your kid a fucking Rolex when he comes out of the motherfucking pussy, do it. If you want to put him in Louis everything, if that's what you want to do, I, I don't think that anybody that uh, is doing it, anything bad about it, I'd like to do it. I probably would spend my money a little bit differently, but everyone should do themselves but. You'll know but success because it'll stop. Like yeah, you said. but I don't care if you're putting your kids in brand new Target clothes. You're successful as long as you're if, providing. If, if, yeah, and exactly. Care That's of the your thing. Family. So you still are successful in whatever endeavor, whatever it is you're trying to achieve. You're successful. Your kids got what they need. They don't have to keep up with the fucking Johnsons or some weird shit. No, you like don't. Like as long as don't if, worry if, about if, the if they got. Yes, exactly. exactly. If if you, if if you are achieving what you need to achieve, you are successful. I absolutely agree with you. Your kids is eating. They got clothes laid back and. The biggest part that you can't pay for is if you're engaging with them and giving them what they need and letting their little brain soak everything up like a fucking sponge no, in the right way. You have to. You got to train them to be successful. It's successful mentally. You know, I mean, you can really, every, the, 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 that's your job as a parent to teach those kids how to be themselves, how to be successful, how to believe in themselves and all that other stuff. But anyways, all right, everybody, we're wrapping up episode 15 with my boy D Money. You guys go to my YouTube Low riding with Lloyd, like, subscribe, all that other shit. West up, we'll see you guys on episode 15. Later. Peace.